something that people have to realize when it comes to content creators and streamers and is, and critics which we'll get to yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a business and a lot of the times when you build your own audience that attracts a lot of sponsorships and a lot of other deals that happen in the background without you realizing because people don't realize that having an audience equates to creating money and how that works is via advertising this happens a lot with tons of games. Like it happened when Modern Warfare came out in 2019. You know, a lot of the top streamers like Tim the Tatman, mm-hmm. uh, Shroud, Ninja, they were literally paid to become COD partners or whatever. Yeah, and just play Modern stuff. Warfare for a period. And to say it's good. And be like, yeah, and to say it's awesome. Like, yeah, bro, this is so awesome. And the way that those, those deals are brokered is basically they look at their audience, their average views or whatever, and they say, oh, okay, I see that on average you have this many viewers. If you play this game for an X amount of hours, we are going to pay you this much per hour and, and per thousand views or whatever. How does that sound? And typically these deals end up ca- like banking them like thousands and thousands of dollars. Like, like no, of I think hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars probably. So it's funny that you mentioned this because you know what game in particular this happened to me with? Marvel's Avengers. Marvel Avengers. I literally... I, I was trying to tell you. like Yeah. The, I literally... I the, wanna, the one I who finally sold me on it was Shroud. Because I was like, whoa, Shroud literally only cares about, like, first-person shooters. So if he's playing Marvel Avengers, it must be so good. Little did my naive dumb butt realize that this man was paid. Well, okay, 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 hold on. To, to- Had you played the demo and taken the minute to download it, I'm sure you would have gotten that off the beta and you wouldn't have bought it. The fact that you missed it, which is what I was trying to tell you, hey, I played it. That doesn't seem like the way they've been promoting it, but I didn't want to ruin your spirit because I have a tendency to do that in, the, in us and our arguing. We always end up off-putting certain things, or at least we used to, mm-hmm. right? I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to give you the benefit of the doubt and enjoy something, you know, and, and I, I hope that the game is good. But anyways, con- continue. Yeah, yeah, no, I was, I was just saying that I was watching Shroud play. It was like, whoa, this is the funnest thing I've ever played. Lies. <laughs> I played the game and it was god-awful, dude. And now it's dead. It has like 10 yeah. players. Just So what, yeah. we're, what we're trying to say is just well, yeah, you, you be gotta wary be careful, of right? that and, and especially, I see this with critics as well. They're, they're obviously paid to write a good thing. Even, even if many, many of these critics, and I'm talking about IGN, Kotaku, and all that stuff, many of these people, a lot of times, they'll go and they'll do a presentation or something, and PR will come up behind them. It's like, hey, you can say this, 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 don't say this. And then you got to send them like the article first beforehand to make sure that they're okay with you, what you write. Mm-hmm. And well, it, it builds unnecessary hype because they don't know the full extent of the game. They're only given a piece and they're only able to make the impression off of that piece that, again, is most likely what's going to show up on E3 anyways because they want to hide the skeletons behind yeah, the Yeah, I think it's already pretty uh, messy yeah. that the developers, like PR people or whatever, or, or the companies themselves like ha- try to have any say in how honest a review can be because that already kind of removes a little bit of the honesty right there. but. The other thing is too is that they're. I heard that they're not necessarily even paid to do it because that would. I think that might even result in like a legal issue. No, it it, 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 it depends because a preview isn't a review. Right, 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 right. right. But like all I'm trying to say is that it's not always necessarily that there's an exchange of money. I I know that a lot of the times, like with with companies like Otaku and all that. Okay, okay. But the money also comes from the business themselves. Like they'll say, hey. We want to keep a good relationship with this company, so we'll give you a bonus if you write it this way. No, right. I, I get that. And I know that those might be some cases, but I actually saw, I forget, there was like a, this lady that apparently was a popular game reviewer or something that she worked for IGN, and I think she made a video talking about this stuff. Is that I think, Alana if I remember Pierce. correct, huh? Alana Pierce, the girl that I mentioned at the beginning. Probably. That, uh, that was abused. She was the one that made the video talking about how some critics are just, they, so, sometimes they're afraid to give a good, uh, good or bad score because they don't, they're afraid what the readers are going to be like. And sometimes they are coerced in previews. Right. Uh, at least oh, for IGN. Previews. She's speaking well, for IGN specifically. Uh-huh. When you're doing previews, that's where it kind of gets like gray. But for reviews, it's mostly people just well, give her a proper I, opinion. Regardless of that, I think it goes further than even reviews and previews and all that. I think even if, like, let's say you have a show, like the one that we have, and we say something to criticize a certain company, a certain yeah. individual, a certain game, whatever. I, I believe, if I remember seeing that video or, or, or what I heard, it's something like uh, everyone who works in, like, the game journal... Ju- uh, journalism. Ju- journalism uh, industry yeah. is wary a lot of times of of dishing out criticism due to the fact that like it doesn't even necessarily have to do with money or getting paid or whatever is that if they 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 view it as like if they ever do something that's unfavorable to a certain developer or company or whatever that they might 
hinder themselves from having opportunities with them yeah, in the future. And it's not just like that. Early it's access things and exactly. stuff of that nature. And it's not just that because obviously they want to stay ahead of the ball game from yeah, their competitors. Yeah, they want to be so relevant. It's competitive. They want to be relevant and it's their business. But it's not just that. It's also with the audience. They don't want to piss off their audience because they might disagree with their opinion. They're afraid mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's very valid as well, which are things that people have to keep in mind when you're listening to somebody who gives their opinion. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And a little later, when we get into the critics part, where we, we start pulling that apart a little bit more, um, I'm going to mention some people that I still find trustworthy to this day to give properly, like to properly give their own opinion on reviews or in-depth analysis and all that stuff. Ooh, that sounds kind of spicy. You're going to be naming people that you should probably be like, eh, stay away. No, 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 I'm saying I'm going to name people I trust. Okay. I'm not going to name people you shouldn't trust. I'm going to name people I trust. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to put anybody down. I'm only going to pick up people I trust, and then I'm just Just out of say, curiosity, you don't have to name anyone, but is there people that you're just like, oh, yeah, I don't trust that, that person in particular? Oh, no, of course. I mean, I don't, I don't classify them by, by people. I classify them by the company they work for. Oh, okay, by the people, by the company they work so for. Even yeah, I, guess, I think everyone could think of a couple of companies. Because at the end of the day, it's like like they, they might be cool people, but they're obviously stuck by the company. So if I see, like, a certain reviewer writing a certain way and they belong to like i don't know kotaku or something i'll be like kotaku sucks i'm not i'm not going there right mm -hmm. um same thing for ign same thing for anywhere i'm um, obviously objective depending on the person who it is because everybody's different and some people have tenure some people don't mm -hmm. but there's very very few people i trust for an opinion uh anywhere even on youtube like mm -hmm. youtube uh, content creators because it's the same crap it's the same crap right. and more than the critics the content creators are the ones who are most afraid of losing out their option because their entire content is based on them being competitive and showing gameplay and this and that first and getting the dibs to promote their content and all that and their their brand yeah like so, mr what's his name the uh walkthrough guy uh the rad brand rad brand yeah rad well, brand yeah, always yeah, gets he, his he, games he, early he, and stuff he, he just gets i mean he just does the game and he gets a lot of views it's not like he no but i'm pretty I think, or, he does reviews but he doesn't criticize them like to no, the but that's, that's that. No, yeah, but I'm just saying that's an example oh, of like yeah, yeah, yeah. a content creator that might yeah, yeah, be yeah, a little scared yeah. to be like, yeah, yeah. "Yo, this game sucks." Because, sucks. <laughs> like, let's say, let's say, uh, I know that sus. he did a walkthrough of Spider Man, uh, the, the first sus. Spider Man when it when it first came out. If he goes like, "Hey guys, this Spider Man sucks," and then he's gonna look at it, like they're gonna look at and some guys gonna look at it and be like, yeah, "Oh, yeah, Spider Man I mean, sucks." Oh, so you're not gonna get an early copy well, next time. Well, and that's yeah, just I mean, bad I mean, the Rad Brad just says every game is great, so. Yeah, I'm that's I'm a positive advice, but I, I'm just, I threw I'm out a name to, to throw out a name. Even, even if he looks Joe. like he's not interested in the game, he just says, like, eh, this game's great. Yeah, you know? that's, game's great. that's like his trademark. At this his point, remark. I don't even think he he uh, <laughs> he even bothers recording that line anymore. He just has it pre-recorded. He, he has like a, a button and says, a, a oh, switch. this game's great. This game's great. great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> funny. You know, I, don't, I don't mean to put in that other guy. The guy looks cool. He's, he's awesome. I've seen a lot of his videos, So, but it's just funny how. That yeah. line almost always shows up in every video. Anyways. Hey there, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Co-op Syndicate. Make sure to check out both the Co-op Syndicate main channel and clip channel to get all of our content. If you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and ringing the bell as well so that you never miss out on any future episodes. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your friends and family, or you could also share it on any social media website of your liking. If you guys would prefer to listen to our podcast on the go instead of viewing the full episode on YouTube, consider checking the Co-op Syndicate podcast out at the Co-op Syndicate dot buzzsprout.com we host the co-op syndicate on buzzsprout and it is available on apple podcast spotify google podcast or anywhere where you listen to your podcasts if you'd like to watch us as we record the podcast live you could actually give us a follow at twitch.tv slash co-op syndicate we go live every thursday and saturday at 4 30 p.m if you'd like to support the channel you could consider subscribing to us with Amazon Prime for free over there. If you'd like to participate in community events and talk to other members of the community, consider joining our Discord, which I will leave the links to in the description down below. If you would like to support the podcast and get rewarded in return, consider pledging to our podcast at patreon.com forward slash co-op syndicate where you can support us at many different levels. There are multiple tiers that offer all sorts of different rewards for the level that you choose to support us at, including Discord privileges, merch, gift cards, and much more. Also, if you would just like the merch directly without pledging to the Patreon, you could buy our merch at merch.streamelements.com forward slash co-op syndicate. Lastly, if you'd like to keep up with Jordan or I outside of the co-op syndicate, you could find us on every social media platform 
under Michael C. Moore for myself or JG underscore Mark one for Jordan. Thank you guys again. And until next time, happy listening. Thank <laughs> you.